Hi, welcome to First and All Financial. I'm your host and marketing director here, Ellie Delaney. Um, I have Ryan here with me to talk about an insightful topic, um, how to share your money journey with your kids. Um, you know, I think it's an important thing to empower our kids with that knowledge. So let's just dive right into why do you think it's important for our kids? Um, so, you know, I know you have this subject to talk about, and I kind of want to set the stage a little bit differently. Okay. So, um, how do you define kids? Well, my kids right now are young, and so it's going to help me out to maybe understand how to share that knowledge with a younger base, like 12 and under, but I know it's also important for older kids. So, maybe let's start with younger and talk about how that can change. Okay. Yeah, because I think, uh, you know, I think it's different conversations with different people. Right. Uh, because if you're, you know, you have young kids, it's it's one thing. If you have kids that are, you know, junior high or teenage, it's something else. Yeah. But if you're 80, you still have kids, right? So there's still there are still money conversations to have then as well. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it changes, uh, you know, so it changes over time from like, you know, the kids know nothing about what money is, right? You know, they're little and you'll teach them about their piggy bank. They can buy anything. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they don't they don't know, yeah. right, what Limitless money is. Limitless candy at the concession stand. Is for. <laughs> but, you know, then, then it switches, uh, you yeah. know, when they're, when they're older, it's like, okay, maybe someday I'm going to die and I'm, you know, I'm planning my estate stuff. You know, and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe including the kids on I mean, you're going to get some of this. Here's the way to use those things. So, okay. but yeah, I mean, so that's kind of what I was, you know, was thinking about a little bit is kind of a range of, of definition of kids. But, but it is important. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. important. No, ma no matter the age. When I grew up, it wasn't as normal. Like, I felt like my parents didn't talk about money or what it looked like or how much we had or what we can and can't do. Yeah. And we had a piggy bank, but that was it. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's different. I think it's, I think it's a family. I don't think it's a generational thing, although maybe yeah, I would maybe lean towards the, you know, the, the baby boomer generation maybe didn't talk with their kids as much about money. I, I might be wrong. Uh, but I think it's a family thing. I think yeah. if you go to families, like some families talk about money and some people don't, yeah. some families don't talk yeah. about money. Um, I think in where I'm at with my kids, you know, I try to teach Eloise, you know, this is why we can't buy these things all the time or, hey, mom has to go to work because making money is important and we need to save. And like I try, but how much does she take in? I don't know. <laughs> well, do you have a, do you have like a, do you have a money plan with them? No, not at this point. So you don't have like a, hey, this, this, these are the, you're going to get an allowance or you're going to earn your money and this is what you're going to do with it. And, you know, here are the places that you go with it and here's why. So you, yeah. do you not have at them? this point? I mean, I think Eloise is friendly maybe to that age, but my younger ones probably not. But I mean, what do you think that could look like? Well, I think it's just like any of our financial planning, like you have to have a plan for them and mm -hmm. start at a certain, you know, start planning at a certain point. Okay. So, um, uh, I, the name of the book escapes me. Maybe we can put it in the, in the comments, okay. but uh, there, there's one book that we kind of had adopted in, in my family to use with the kids, and it talks about um, setting a family salary at a certain age. Now they have to be old enough to understand, you know, some of this. Now you can obviously start teaching them with, you know, piggy banks and you know, giving them, uh, you know, here's money we put in your piggy bank, and we're going to save yeah. that, and we don't <laughs> use that. So I think mm -hmm. that's the very first part. And hey, here's some money that we're going to use, and we're going to use it to buy some things, right? Whether it's whether it's candy at the at the concession stand or whether it's clothes or something else. Mm -hmm. But eventually you have to put the kids in charge of their money or, or teach them how to use the money. Uh, because if you don't teach them how to use it, they're not going to know the best way to do it. So okay. anyway, this, this talks about basically uh, having a salary for your kids and giving them responsibilities that goes along. Now you can tie that to responsibilities in the house, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe, you know, maybe it's something simple. Maybe a, you know, maybe you start when they are 10 years old, you know, fifth grade, right? Mm -hmm. So that's probably an age. You could start maybe a little sooner. I don't know if I'd wait till later, but I think that's a, a good age to start. And you could start by, okay, you're going to get a $50 salary every month. And so that salary goes in, uh, you give it to them in cash. Now, I wouldn't give them like a $50 bill, <laughs> 
but I would probably give them a bunch of ones or maybe a bunch of tens. And you would tell them, hey, guess what? Out of that $50 bill, we have some things we have to do. First of all, you need to save some of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe it's $10. $10. Maybe $10 has to go in savings. And you physically set up a savings you know, a bucket or yep. a piggy bank or something mm-hmm. that that money goes into. Um, we also, in our family, we, you know, we give to the church. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe $10 of that goes to offering for the church. So mm-hmm. that goes in another bucket, you know, and you can use envelopes, you can use a container of sorts, you know, that goes in the, the offering. Okay. And then the other, you know, $30 is the spending money. Okay. So this is the money that you get to spend. Okay. But at this age, you have some responsibilities. So you have to, we started with like, you have to buy your own socks. From here on out, for the rest of your life, we are not buying socks anymore. <laughs> so out of that 30... How did that go? <laughs> Pretty good? Well, they didn't buy as many socks as they used to because they didn't want to They didn't want to spend their money. Um, but yeah, so it's like, okay, you have responsibilities. Your responsibilities are for socks. Your responsibilities are if we go to a movie or to a, a basketball game, we're not buying we're not buying snacks anymore. You're buying your own pop, yeah. your own popcorn, your own candy. You can buy whatever you want. You have your thirty dollars. You can you go That's buy that. That's where my thought goes because I swear Eloise has no idea when to stop buying snacks and when to eat her dinner. So it's like that's great. Well, and then when she spends her money, it's gone. Yeah. Okay. And then she better eat dinner. So so they get that, and then so you come up with those things, and so over the years we add different things. That's so we eventually clever. started adding. Um, okay, now you're responsible for buying um, half of all of the shirts that we buy. Okay. So if we're gonna buy, if you're gonna buy a shirt, you got to come up with half of that money, or we don't get to buy the shirt. Uh, eventually you have to buy all of the t-shirts. Eventually we move it into sweatshirts or you add, you add shoes. Sports stuff. You, you know, and, like and shoes are a big one, but it's like, okay, now you have to have buy half of your shoes. Now you have to buy all of your shoes. Now you have to help with car insurance. Now you have to help with phone bill. And so every year they get a little pay raise, right? Okay. And so the idea is, so some of this is, these are things we would be buying anyway, right? but we're putting the money in their hands so they are the ones and helps them understand understand how to use it the importance right and saving and yeah okay. so and and so then you can tie that salary to some different things you can say you know guess what here's the salary but it's dependent upon you you know taking out the trash doing this chore doing these things as well if you don't do these things you either don't get all of your salary or you don't get any of your salary okay. so we've had months where they didn't get theirs i'm like you're not getting your salary this month <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> well, it was luck. something they did the previous month. Like this next month, no, it's not coming. Okay. Uh, you know, and then uh, you know, we kind of broke it down a little bit farther because you know, you know, of course, with investments, I'm like, okay, so out of your the money we put into savings, some of it is our short term savings, and some of it's our long term savings. And so we started to teach them about, hey, this is kind of like the savings. The short term savings basically is money they have to put aside that they can't use this month, mm-hmm. but next month they can take it out and put it in their spending money. Mm. Okay. I was going to say, what if they want something out of their savings? <laughs> then well, what? Well, so, well, the savings, so the, the short-term savings, they, can't, they can use, but only the next month. But then the other trick is the money that comes in that month has to go back, you know, $10 of that would have oh, to yeah. go into the short-term savings. So they always should have some money in the short-term savings. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then what, part of it also went to long-term savings. And so that eventually went into an investment account that they were buying some shares and, and investing yeah. in something. Yeah. Um, so they kind of had two levels of savings, which is what we should have anyway, right? We should have our short-term emergency money. We should have our long-term grow for the long-term. And so that's that's how we, yeah, you know, sense. so we kind of uh, tweaked some of the ideas that we had from that, that, that book and made them, uh, I think, a little bit better. Hmm. I think it's just tough to know what's appropriate at what age. I think that's what I've struggled with the most, that that plan makes a lot of sense and that helps a lot. But it's like, at what point do you try and help them understand more things like bills and why we can't afford certain things? What's appropriate? Well, I think, I mean, that, that, I mean, I think that age is, you're starting to teach them that. Yeah. But they start to figure out, well, if I can't, I'm out of spending money. And, you know, because that first month they might, and it's, the thing you can't do with this is you can't say, if it's their spending money, you have to make, make it allow them to spend it on whatever they want if you're going to make that rule right Mm -hmm. so if they go out and they're like mom i'm going to buy this toy at the store you're like no no no, you don't need that you have to let them make that mistake and like be like spend their money on the toy 
And then when something comes up that month on the list of things that they needed. I'll just play this out in my head. I'll right, because that's what's going to happen. That first month they're going to be like, I have $30. I can go buy whatever I want. And this is going to be gone. And then you're going to be like, oh, well, you got to go buy new socks. No, I don't, you know, I don't want to. Like, no, you have to buy socks. Where's your money at? Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we did was we also started them keeping a notebook of it. Mm -hmm. So we started teaching them how to keep track of the you know, the numbers, right? Yeah. So we had a notebook and we had a, you know, a system, you can create a different system that says, okay, I put money into my savings, it's $10 in, um, I put another $10 in, and so they kind of start to keep, mm, you know, their, their accounting of it, yeah. you know, so, th and so you should be able to go into their room someday, six months into it and say, okay, show me your notebook, and there should be $40, it says it's, there's $40 and there should be $40 in the savings, right? Mm -hmm. And it should, should, should mm -hmm. match up. So some kids are going to be better than others, and that's what we found. And some kids are going to spend their, you know, all their spending money, and some kids aren't. Yeah. Um, and they're going to be like, you know, so we have one of our kids is like they always have extra money. But I, but I, it's kind of interesting. So they've started to use, you know, that approach, you know. And then they're going to get hopefully then when they get you know a job and start working outside of the house, yeah. maybe the salary continues, but then hopefully they, you can say, hey, guess what? What are you doing with that money? We should be doing the same things with that mm -hmm. money, saving some, uh, giving some you know, to, to the church, and um, you know, spending some of it. Yeah, okay. So okay. the other thing we're, we're doing with it is, you know, once they go to college, though, it's done. Like the salary is done at that point. So at some point, it's like you know, they're not part of the normal household income, and it changes. And so we've mm -hmm. kind of said that's when they go to college. And maybe we set a little, few different rules there until they're on their own and have some you know, more income. But... Yeah, that that changes then too. Okay. So you don't do this. You don't keep it going until they're like forty. You know. So. <laughs> okay. So things might fall off a little bit through college, but how do you keep sharing your financial journey with them after that? And what things might look like for you? Is that important? So how do you mean? Like when they get as they get older? Yeah. Well, so you started to teach them about saving and investing, yeah. and, you know, and then you have to have conversations along the way, and so at some point you're like, okay, guess what? You know, we've been investing this right into this this investment account you know now you need to go meet ryan right mm -hmm. you know so my kids is like well they know ryan but you know, yeah. that, you know but, but if it's you you're like okay now you need to meet my financial advisor yeah now now we need to go in and talk with him about or her about you know where where are what is this going to do from for you in the future and do i need to do more saving and investing and so introduce them to a professional that can then help them uh, introduce them to your professional, right? Introduce mm -hmm. them to your financial advisor to help them down the road as well. Yeah. Okay. So then maybe at that point, they would even want to do their own things with you and not just what we had set up. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So then it should grow. And, and it could be sooner, right? You know, they could, so if for some of that money that's coming, you know, if they go to, go, they go get that summer job or maybe they have that part-time job in high school, you can start that conversation then. It's like, okay, hey, um, let's go meet with, with, my financial advisor now yeah. and start saving some of that money not just some of the, the, the household salary money that we have set up yeah. for you. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds to me like having a plan is just really important and making sure your kids are comfortable asking questions and learning about money and just making that a comfort zone and not something that they're scared to ask about. You know, because that's how I grew up. It was like, oh, I don't know if I should ask dad about this or can I ask dad for money, you know? So having that plan would be Right. Well, yeah, because any, 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 you know, however you might adopt this idea yeah. or strategy or whatever, but, you know, if you start doing that, then it's a conversation that you have with them and they're, yeah. they're not um, averse to it. And, yeah. and you know, things might be, you know, you might be in a, a good financial situation for a while or not so good yeah. financial situation for a while. And so that maybe allows you to explain those things to you to them as well. Yeah. You know, if you're doing something like this, you know, I said fifty dollars, but somebody might start with a hundred dollars, and somebody yeah. might start with twenty-five. It's wherever your situation allows you to do that. Uh, and the thing I think with this is they always get a pay raise every year, right? Because they're going to have more responsibility. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, you know, have a little bit bigger salary to go along yeah. with it. Okay. So, um, is there anything you want to share more about? different stages throughout the kid's life before we wrap up here? Well, yeah, I know, because I think it's, it's, you know, so this is a, like a financial journey with your children. Yeah. So the journey changes. So you have like, you know, the education time of helping them get started and then getting, introducing them to their financial advisor. But, you know, I meet with our clients all the time. We do their financial plans and um, we've been asking them how they want to include their kids in the conversation.
And these kids uh, are adults now. These kids are adults. So, yeah. you know, maybe maybe the client is, is nearing retirement, right? Um, and maybe their kids are just getting started financially, but maybe they never had those money conversations. You know, so, so one thing, you know, I think a parent can really do is, you know, invite them to meet their financial advisor, yeah. right? Say, hey, you know, Brian's done a great job for us. You know, we, we started out with him when we were young, or maybe we didn't get started till we were too late, but we want to get you started, or not too late, but later on, and we yeah. wish we would have started sooner. And let's get you started as soon as possible. Yeah. So, you know, you might be coming in this conversation saying, well, I never visited with my kids about that. You know, I'm 50 years old. I'm 60 years old. Yeah. Is, it, is it too late? No, it's not. Introduce your kids to that financial advisor then. Um, but then the other thing that we've been talking about, especially as clients age, right, they're, they're, um, things they're thinking about change. So eventually they're not going to be here someday, right? Mm -hmm. So anything they own and is going to pass on to their kids. So at some point, it's really bringing the kids into their financial situation and sharing, hey, guess what? When we're not here anymore, this is what it looks like. Ryan's been helping us. You know, if we die today, you know, if we get hit by a bus, you know, here's how everything is laid out and how we expect it to flow, right? We've, yeah. we've done some, we've done our estate planning, we've done our financial planning, and here's how we expect it to flow. And so I think it's important to share with kids um, what that looks like. Um, you know, and numbers can change, right? You know, you might get sick and go to a nursing home tomorrow and spend assets down. Mm -hmm. You might have investments grow and get bigger. But I think to include them in that, that way there is, there's not... Because there's a lot of uncertainty when somebody dies. It's like, okay, well, what did mom and dad want, yeah. right? Um, well, we inherited some insurance. We inherited their investment accounts. Well, what are we supposed to do with it? You know, what did they want us to do with it? And maybe they don't want you to do anything. Maybe they're like, hey, when you get this, do whatever you want. <laughs> um, but there's also unknowns and, well, what can we do with it, right? What are the tax implications? Yeah. And so if, if you can, you know, help educate the kids ahead of time, it avoids... You know, I think a big thing it avoids is stress for the family at, at, at a very stressful time, mm -hmm. right? You know, if you can educate them, they're like, okay, we know it's all taken care of. They have it, they have it worked out. We met with Ryan a couple times while mom and dad were getting older. And we know, you know, that he's going to help us through that process and our attorney's going to help us and, and we've, we've seen we what it's going to look like. And, and the other thing I think it avoids is or can help alleviate, you know, there's people get... Um, in family fights over money mm. when mom and dad die. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you can include the kids in that sooner, I think it, in, in my mind, I think it helps avoid yeah. some of that conflict later on. Yeah. Um, you know, I know that those situations can get very complicated. And so um, parents might not want to bring the kids into all of the information all at once, but I think they need to, especially as they get older, especially a lot of, you know, many of the older generations didn't have those money conversations. Right. And so the kids still don't know. I'm like, well, I don't know where mom and, you know, I don't know where everything is for mom and dad. If I, yeah. if they died tomorrow, I'm just gonna have to go through the house and start looking for stuff. Yeah, I went through that. <laughs> it you, was you, awful. It wasn't good, yeah. was it? Yeah, I know you, you told me about that. Mm -hmm. So, so what would you wish would have been different about that? Just having those conversations, like you said, um, that wasn't something that we thought about, you know, think you're gonna live forever or something. I don't know. It just wasn't brought up so just making sure that now from my point of view i make my kids comfortable to ask questions or talk about it and when they're old enough and it's appropriate that i bring them to you and i tell them hey this is what mom's plan is and this is what i want and it all makes sense and you know the other thing people can do is at least in that situation is they can have a folder or mm -hmm. you know a booklet or something and, and that's something we're working on here yeah. as well to help clients with is you know, if, if, if something happens, there's a red folder on my desk, right? You know, there's a red folder, pull the red folder out and it has all the information yeah. we need, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, the first thing we want you to do, you know, after you obviously, if we die, you know, the first thing, you know, is, you know, call the family, mm -hmm. uh, call, uh, you know, call the pastor. And then, you know, third on the list is, you know, call Ryan, call your financial <laughs> advisor. Yeah. And, you know, because he's helped us through all this stuff. And, and if you can have a folder that kind of has a, a summary of things, it's a, you know, it would help the kids start Absolutely. with that. So I, so I think that as we talk about kids, our kids are always our kids, whether they're five or whether they're 75. Yeah. Uh, and so I think we need to keep those lines of communication open as we go. And, yeah. uh, and, and 
um, not be afraid to talk about it. Yeah, great. That's all I had. Uh, you explained that wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna have to start a plan. I think. <laughs> With yeah. My kids. Well, she's a, well, how a old is salary. She? Yeah. How old is Elise? She's eight. Yeah. So she's close. But I mean, I'm telling you, when she wants snacks, she wants them on demand, and she thinks she's just endless money. Well, you could money start with some, you could start with something small now. You know, I don't. And know. they don't want to eat supper, and they just think they can snack all night. Yeah. So snacks at like the everywhere. Sporting, yeah. The when we events. go out, when we're going on a road trip, she wants to stop at Casey's. It's the first thing she wants to do. Well, start I'm like, her. Girl, we just ate supper five minutes ago. <laughs> we'll start her. Say, hey, from now on, you're buying yeah. your own. Snacks snacks, but you got to earn it, right? Yeah. You know, start some chores. Fun. Maybe maybe you do, don't do the salary. Maybe you just do a chore thing, yeah. right? It's like, hey, this is the snack. If that's the problem, you know, mm -hmm. then teach her to earn it. And then mm -hmm. if she's going to buy it, I mean, she's got her money to do it. Yeah, so. I'm going to I'm gonna have to start that. But I don't have anything else. So right. um, I guess we'll wrap up. And yeah, please share this with uh, your family and especially your kids. Have those conversations. And if you have questions about how to do that, give us a call. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, we do it all the time. So Thank you.